I go much further, I want to introduce you to another very important way to manage your colors on your map. It's very important, obviously, that if you want something to be the same color green like we did with the landmass and the islands here, that that's the exact same color green in every place. Likewise, if I was going to have a lake and I want it to be that same color blue, I would want it to be exactly the same color blue. And I showed you a couple of different ways to get to a particular color. Notice that down here, as we said, the last color that you used is there and available for you to get right back to. That's very easy. An extremely handy way to make sure you're using the exact same color is the eyedropper tool, which takes a sample of a particular color for you and puts it into either the fill or the stroke as it's selected. And of course, also, if you have a very specific color that you're trying to get to, then if you double click on either the fill or the stroke, you can open up the color picker here and specify an RGB value or a very specific CMYK value or even a hexadecimal uh, uh, code for a color. So if you've got a very specific color and you know its particular designation, numeric designation in one of these different ways of communicating color, you can specify it exactly. There's another way to manage your colors that's very, very important when you're doing cartography, and especially if you're doing cartography as part of a series of maps, because then not only is it important to make sure that, for instance, the land is the same color green on every part of the map, it's also important to be sure that that same color green is the land on every map that you produce. So you're trying to carry the same color across different maps. A fantastic way to do this is to set up color swatches. Right now, we just have three different colors on this map. Well, four if you include the back of the, the black for the frame. But we've got the land color, the ocean color, and then we've got the color for the stroke for the outline of the land. What if we wanted to save those? I'm going to just cancel this right over here. And I'm going to go over here to my swatches uh, palette again. Window, Swatches, if yours is not open or if yours is someplace else. These color swatches are a fantastic way for you to save a particular color for your map. And especially if you are working to create maps as part of a team, it's very important, of course, that everybody is using the same colors. Then you could be trying to make sure you have the same color on a map across different maps and across different cartographers if you're part of a team. So uh, you want to establish what colors you're going to be using for different things very, very early on. In fact, when I was doing cartography for the archaeological laboratory, that was basically the first thing that we did. We had a whole bunch of different archaeological maps to produce, and so it was very important to make sure that all of the maps because they're going into a single publication, we're very unified in form. And so we very, very carefully specified in the beginning exactly what color was going to be used for each different attribute of the map, and then stuck to it across everybody. So why don't we go ahead and create some swatches for the colors here. I don't know if these colors are the ones I'm going to stick with as this map goes forward. I've got different kinds of things to show you, but let me just show you the color swatches right now. Let's create a new color group. These are different color groups right here. You can see that Illustrator, these are all the default color swatches that are provided by at least this version of Illustrator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right over here to this to say color group. And what I'm going to do is just create a color group for my map. So I'm going to click there. And I don't know what I want to call it. Map color group or just map colors. You can get much more specific. But now I have a new color group in here. Now the first color that I want to add to my color group is the green for the land. So I'm going to go over here to the eyedropper and sample that color green so that I've got it here. Green is forward and then I'm going to click on new swatch. Now notice that it goes ahead and loads that particular color that's forward. Here is its exact CMYK designation. Uh, here would be its exact uh, RGB designation. So if you're trying to put in a color that's very specifically, you can do that uh, using the, the values here for your swatch. And notice I can call it something. I can name it something. Right now it starts off with just our numeric designation, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to call it uh, base land. 
color. And I'm going to say OK. Now I'm going to drag that down here. Uh, so now it's inside that particular color, uh, that color group. And you can see that when I hold my cursor over it, it now says base land color as part of my tool tip. Now, uh, let me do the same thing. I'm going to uh, click here and now bring my uh, border color over here. And I'm going to go to new swatch. And I'm going to say land edge and OK. And I want to drag it down here to my new color group. And now you can see that is the land edge. And now, finally, I'm going to come over here and sample my water. It doesn't matter what, where I've got it. I just want to make sure that it's forward so that when I say new swatch, I can say base water, the basic color of water, and say OK and then drag it down. And now I'm beginning to get a little palette, a color palette here, of the exact colors that I'm using for my map. So that if I were trying to put in um, a new island, I'm going to lock the upper frame here. And I'm going to unlock the base layer, the base land layer. And if I wanted to draw in another island right here, OK. Now, how do I get it to exactly those colors? Well, here I've got the stroke, and I can just click over here to the color for the edge, and then click over here. Instead of no fill, I want it to be filled with my color for the land. And so that's a very easy way to make sure you're using exactly the same colors. And also, these particular color palettes can be exported. And that's why I'm saying they're very, very useful uh, if you're trying to create consistent colored maps across different projects and different cartographers, because you can export that and then share them. So all the cartographers get together and establish the colors, export the color palette, everybody loads them into their project, and then everybody is certain that everybody is using the same colors. Very, very important technique to learn in Illustrator if you're going to be doing cartographic production. I don't like this island that I just drew in here. That was just an example, so I'm going to grab it and delete it. All right, well, I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.